Missouri is vast, from the mighty Mississippi to the mountains, from rural farmland to the bustling cities of St. Louis and Kansas City. It is often the backdrop of stories by the most prolific writers who have ever put pen to paper. Most of the adventures recorded in this book really occurred. One or two were experiences of my own, the rest those of boys who were schoolmates of mine. From the past to the present, Mark Twain, born Samuel Clemens in 1835, moved to Hannibal, Missouri when he was four. The small river town had a lasting impact on his life and work, dealing with issues of slavery, poverty, and class differences. When I think of my wife, I always think of her head, the shape of it to begin with. Jillian Flynn, whose Gone Girl was a New York Times bestseller, was born in Kansas City, Missouri in 1971. The book was later turned into a movie and shot in Cape Girardeau. Some people weren't born here, but they felt so compelled to live here that the area just inspired them to build their home and build their family here. You know, some went off and lived elsewhere, but really felt the need to come back. And I think that passion of Missouri is what drives them all to, to write. In honor of the Missouri Bicentennial, the Eugene Fieldhouse Library hosted a special exhibit, Missouri Writers, 200 Years of Talent. One of the um, books that um, inspired us in this exhibit was Mark Twain Abroad, and it was uh, and Eugene Field and Mark Twain Abroad. And it was about the two of them and their different travels, not necessarily with each other, but their travels at the same time period and, and how they viewed what they were doing. And that kind of showed us that there were connections here in Missouri, and um, we wanted to go from there. Mark Twain took his Missouri roots up east, starting the Missouri Society of New York. The sun's a Writers like Langston Hughes, born in Joplin, saying. Missouri in 1902, continued that legacy. And in 1963, he was elected a trustee of the Missouri Society of New York. Often writing about the struggles of black people, Hughes went on to become the poet laureate of Harlem. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? The exhibit featured the 12-volume set of its namesake, Eugene Field's work, and an original copy of this poem he wrote in perfect penmanship. This one being a uh, manuscript of Lover's Lane. Um, Lover's Lane is a lane in St. Joe, Missouri, where Eugene um, would take his lovely wife, then when he was courting her, down. So Lover's Lane became quite the road in St. Joe, still there today. They still honor him there. Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod one night sailed off in a wooden shoe. Born in St. Louis in 1850, Eugene Field was known as the children's poet. Another notable writer from St. Louis also wrote children's books. Kay Thompson, born Catherine Kitty Fink in 1909, wrote the series of books about Eloise, a six-year-old girl that lived in the Plaza Hotel in New York. Thompson lived at the Plaza in the 1950s. And baby Carrie left their little house in the big woods of Wisconsin. Born in Wisconsin after the family moved to Mansfield, Missouri, Laura Ingalls Wilder began her career as a writer in 1894. She published Little House in the Big Woods in 1932, the first of her popular series. Today, her home in Mansfield is a museum. I'd rather stay on this hot tin roof. The great American playwright, Ready. Tennessee Williams, known for his uh, Pulitzer Prize winning uh, plays like Cat places. on a Hot Tin Roof, was born Thomas Lanier Williams in 1911 in Mississippi. But when he was 13, his family moved to St. Louis. His background, his family life was challenging for him. He came from the South. They moved to St. Louis when he was a young boy. He was short. He was very Southern, and he was homosexual, and he was not accepted here. Carrie Houck is with the Tennessee Williams Festival in St. Louis. This year's festival featured the Glass Menagerie. Produced behind Williams' boyhood home on Westminster Place, it was met with rave reviews. But it is an obscure play written at about the same time in the 1940s called Stairs to the Roof that truly connected Williams to his St. Louis roots. What I loved about it was, A, I recognized so much of St. Louis in it, so many St. Louis 
sites, and the International Shoe Company, Wash U, Forest Park. Um, it's all in that play, the zoo. <laughs> It was here in the Central West End that Tennessee Williams grew into the artist that he would become. Down the street from his home, he worked as a writer in residence at a 500 seat theater, now known as the Link Auditorium. So this is where Tennessee performed with a group called the Mummers in the late 30s. And his first full length play was produced by them. They were a community theater a uh, group that was on the edgy side, bohemians, they all had day jobs. Tennessee Williams struggled with mental illness and drug addiction. In 1983, he lost his battle and died of a drug overdose in New York City. His brother brought him back to St. Louis to be buried here at Calvary Cemetery. The black female is assaulted in her tender years by all those common forces of nature at the same time that she is caught in the tripartite crossfire of masculine prejudice, white illogical hate, and black lack of power. Award-winning poet and writer Maya Angelou was born in St. Louis in 1928, here at 3130 Hickory Street. Now registered as a St. Louis landmark, she lived here until she was three years old. Buildings have a power to tell stories um, and to connect physically with, with people's imaginations um, in a unique way. And so, you know, this, these bricks behind us were here. She knew these bricks. She knew, the, she knew these streets. Um, and this is the home that, that, that sheltered her. So there is a very physical, tangible connection to uh, this great American um, encompassed in this building. At the time, this neighborhood was very segregated. St. Louis forced race-based housing restrictions until the late 1940s. There weren't that many neighborhoods where African Americans were allowed to live, um, and this was one of them. Many writers deal with their own pain on the page. In their world, wrestling with words, that become life-changing for them and their readers. Whether they were always here or moved away, there was always something about Missouri that brought them back to their, their roots or what became their legacy.